I would like to appreciate all our honored guests who've come to be with us during this launch, and uh, especially uh, our development partners, those from state and non-state actors, our partnering organizations from different embassies. Phil, welcome. Again, I would like to appreciate the presence of our youth researchers all the way from Kisumu, Mombasa, and Nairobi who are the reason why we are here today, feel much welcome and appreciated. In a special way, I'd also like to appreciate and acknowledge the presence of our, uh, my colleagues from USIP. Uh, feel welcome. So at this juncture, I would like to request Dr. Ilana Lancaster and Dr. Skip to join me on stage. Uh, these two, have been critical in the inception of PAR, and they've been with us from the beginning. And so it is prudent to give them space to speak to us uh, uh, briefly about the whole pr uh, PAR process and what to expect. Let us give them a round of applause. Good morning. Uh, we are very appreciative to have you here with us today um, to uh, participate and learn um, about the work that we've been doing with youth researchers um, in Kisumu, Mombasa, and Nairobi. Um, I am Ilana Lancaster with USIP, and um, together, Skip and I, this is a bit of our, our a pet project, if you will, something we're very passionate about, um, and we've been working with um, all these wonderful youth uh, researchers and Generation Change Fellows. Skip? Again, welcome to all of you. It's a uh, joy to see all of you here. It's a pleasure to be here with all of the youth researchers that we've been working with the last two years. This has been an incredible uh, and exciting project, and I'm happy to see it coming to this culmination. So what we want to do is just um, give you a little um, background about um, the project. And we just want to begin to talk. If I think most of you know about the United States Institute of Peace, but in case you don't, we uh, were established by US Congress in 1984, um, and our work is to prevent, mitigate, and resolve violent conflict around the world. Um, we are a government agency, um, independent and nonpartisan. Um, and this participatory action research project um, was in partnership with the Generation Change Fellows Program. The Generation Change Fellows Program is active in 21 countries, um, in Africa, in Asia, um, and the Middle East, and uh, in South America, in particular in Colombia. Um, and we have... Um, Generation Change Fellows who are doing the work of um, building peace in their communities. Uh, they, um, mo all of our Generation Change Fellows, including our Kenyan Generation Ch Change Fellows, of which there are 41, um, all have founded or manage youth-led peace-building organizations. And the Generation Change Fellows um, invest deeply, um, a program invest deeply in the youth peace builders um, in support of um, UN Resolution 2250. Um, so at we, um, USIP, see youth as um, not passive recipients of the, youth pe the, the peace and security agenda, but rather active um, agents of change. Um, and with that, we are going to talk a little bit more about PAR. Thank you. So the question, what is PAR, what is participatory action research? And so jumping off where Alana leaves us about Resolution 2250, it really is about trying to move youth to the center of the peace building agenda, and, and not just through uh, a, a kind of superficial participation, but really helping them move to the center of creating knowledge about what peace building is in their communities. And so when Alan and I decided to, to work on this together, we thought about what would be the most appropriate methodology, and participatory action research is one that I had worked with for about 20 years now, and the real purpose of it is to shift power to the people, the shift, shift it to youth, the shift it to communities. And so when we often think about research, we think of research being done with by people who have you know letters after their name, PhD, masters, um, that you have to have extensive education. And the real goal with participatory action research is to, to acknowledge that all people have knowledge, they all have experience, and that people are the experts in their own lives. 
So nobody is more of an expert in Laconi than the people who live in Laconi. And so if you want to know about what's happening there, how do we engage them? If you live in Kasumu, uh, Matari, these are the people you want to engage. Um, it's not that young people are not engaged in research, but the way that they are engaged is very superficial. It's as enumerators, they're going out and helping fill out questionnaires or helping somebody else do a research question, and you're gathering data for them. But PAR shifts, shifts that power dynamic upside down and says the youth are going to be the ones who are leading this research. They're the ones who are at the center. They're creating the question. They're determining the research structure. And they're guiding the process. Um, so we really see it as really building the capacity of youth to be researchers uh, throughout the process. And it builds their capacity. It engages other people in the community who are participating in that work. At the end of the day, it marginalizes, it, it, you know, it mobilizes marginalized voices and marginalized knowledge that's often overlooked in important peace building practices. So for us, it's a very transform transformative approach. Um, it's also an iterative approach. So oftentimes with research, things are kind of set out at the beginning. There's a research design, and people follow it throughout the whole process. Uh, for various reasons, participatory research is more iterative. And it's about learning as you go and adapting as you go. So there's a little spiral that we use to describe the process. And so it makes even more sense when you're new to participatory work, when you're new to research, because you're not familiar with how a research cycle works. And so you, you begin to learn, you take some ideas, you act on those, uh, you reflect on what it was to do that work, and then you take another action and move forward. And so the whole uh, year-long process of doing participatory work with these youth was about exploring some concepts, looking at some ideas, going out into the community, engaging with people, coming back and making sense of that knowledge, and then working together to determine how we would move forward. So every time the youth would engage, we would come back and debrief with them for a couple of hours to understand what had happened, and then we would work together to determine what those next steps would be. So the process was very fluid. It was very cooperative. It was collaborative throughout the entire uh, structure. And so I'll say a little bit about that. So we basically broke this work into, into four phases. It was spread over about 12 months um, in about 12 different workshops that the youth organized. And those were formal workshops. And between those, there are dozens of other smaller activities that happened in each of the cities. So also imagine that this process is happening in parallel in three different cities. So it's happening in Nairobi, it's happening in Kasumu, and it's happening in Mombasa. Uh, but we worked with our facilitators, our generation change facilitators, to help uh, get them up to speed in the methods and the facilitation of participatory action research. Uh, that was working with Alana and myself. And then we turned it over to them to engage with the youth that they are active with in their communities. They called them together and said, this is our plan. This is your research project. It's really up to you to determine where this is going to go. Uh, We'll, we'll help you with the process, but the content, the structure, the direction is really all in your hands. And that was a really exciting call uh, to the young people in these communities to have that put before them. Something that seemed out of reach to do research is suddenly put into their hands and saying, it's yours. Uh, you're not the enumerator. You're not the, the person just doing the work for someone else. This is your own work. And so the four phases of this work uh, were basically around generating what the research question was going to be. And that was a couple of month process, the three uh, phases of the work that included that. Welcome. Yeah, this is our colleague from Laconi. Welcome. It's great to have you here. Um, so the first phase of the work was really about the ideation and des deciding what the research question was going to be. Again, this was the youth researchers, researchers deciding what the focus would be. Uh, this led to each of the cities having their own focus. Kasumu was on youth employment, uh, Mombasa on uh, countering violent extremism at the community level, and Nairobi around uh, en engaging go with government, good governance for a youth perspective. So that was the first phase of the work. And then, then moved into determining, OK, this is our research question. Who do we engage with? Do we engage with the government? Do we engage with with police, to engage with religious leaders. And so there's a question of who your stakeholders are going to be to collaborate with. Because it's not just about your knowledge. It's about collaborating and gathering knowledge from across the whole of the community. So that was the most extensive phase of working with people, working with different workshops. They use different participatory tools to gather data and engage with different community groups. Uh, the Mombasa team itself engaged more than 350 people in their process. The other teams engaged about 70 or 80 people through the various methodologies that they utilized. Um, the third phase of this was to bring all of that data together, um, to do an analysis to make sense of what the key findings and key themes of that research were across the various stakeholder groups. You'll see a little bit about what that process looked like in the film that's coming up. And then once there were some key findings and sort of a, a final idea what the synthesis of all this information was, uh, the groups then decided to bring that information back to the community. Because one of the other general concerns about uh, 
regular research is it's a bit extractive. People come into the community, they gather data, and then they disappear. And that may come out in the academic report, but the people in the community never see what was the result of that research. So it was very important for these researchers to bring that finding back to the community, to report back to the community about what they had learned and share it with the various stakeholders that they collected information with. And that was the final phase of the research, which was a big public event, a finding sharing event in which people were invited to participate. And it was very itself participatory, involved lots of theater, music, and active engagement. So just a final slide here. Uh, we did make an effort to really try to understand the impact of this work. Uh, we're still doing that, we're still assessing it, but the uh, publication that you have uh, goes to a great extent to try to understand what the impact was. And we looked at the impact in terms of a variety of levels. Uh, the first of these being really people reconceptualizing what research is, moving from a very traditional model of what research looks like to a more participatory, engaged model of knowledge production. So people reimagining how to do research, from that, then all of our practitioners, our generation change fellows, then realizing that research is not something beyond the grasp of myself and my organizations, and how do we embed research as a practice in our peace building organizations at the local level. Um, and so that comes to the practitioners who then build that into the organization. And then finally, we look at the results in terms of the youth, who you'll hear from today in terms of what their experience was and what the value of this process was for them. And that's detailed in the publication, as well as the variety of uh, policy impacts that came through this work, because there were actually quite a lot of engagement from the local policy uh, makers, local uh, ward leaders and things who are part of this research who are actually very receptive to the work. And that's one of the powerful things about this work is that it takes local knowledge and not only mobilizes it, lifts it up, but it puts it in a form which is recognized and validated by people who are stakeholders in policy making and they can use it to make change very rapidly. Allow me to acknowledge the presence of the Honorable Mishimboko, Karibu Sana Mama. Let's appreciate her. Feel much welcomed in Karibu Sana. At this juncture, it's my honor to invite Mr. Matt Van Eaton, the CV coordinator uh, here at the US Embassy, Kenya, to come and give us his address. Karibu Sana, Mr. Van, an appreciation. Let's appreciate Mr. Van. Habari Zenu, uh, Honorable MP Mboko, uh, Mabibi and Namabwana. <laughs> I'm going to try that again. Mabibi Namabwana. Thank you. Okay, my Swahili. That's about the end of it, folks. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I am a poor substitute for the keynote speaker today who was intended. Uh, we're hoping that he will join later today because we have many important things to talk about, including the, the very uh, issues at play here in this event today. Um, but personally, I'm very honored uh, for the, and for the grateful for the opportunity to join you all for this important event. Uh, once again, my name is Matt Van Etten, CVE coordinator for the Embassy. Uh, Mission Nairobi is very engaged in CVE across the board, uh, over $30 million in programming, many agencies recognizing the not only what is at stake when it comes to CVE in Kenya, but also the momentum with which civil society and government has made uh, in combating these threats. Uh, I know I speak for the whole embassy when I say how proud we are to host this group of young dynamic advocates working to drive peace building and address radicalization. As you know, these are generational issues driven by deep-seated factors like marginalization, ideology, and perceived economic equality. The champions in this room represent the next generation of leaders stepping up to address these challenges. And as President Kenyatta said, following the tragic attacks at 14 Riverside, to build a new Kenya that is prosperous, secure, and inclusive, and in which every Kenyan has an opportunity to thrive. The United States has been proud to put youth front and center in its CVE and other peace building efforts in recent years. Our doing so recognizes that youth have a unique opportunity to shape events in this thriving democracy. You are all so much a part of why Kenya stands out for addressing issues like radicalization honestly, inclusively, and creatively, while learning from tragic lessons of the past, as the United States has also unfortunately had to do. At US Embassy Nairobi, we also share the approach of those in this room in demanding active and participatory research before conducting any CVE-related activities. The methodology being presented today represents yet another innovative leap 
in Kenya's leadership on CVE in the region, as well as around the world. And it aims, as it aims, to dig deeper into, inter under, into underlying issues at play in this ever-evolving field. Armed with this new approach, practitioners across the region can improve their management of the threats of violence in vulnerable areas. The United States is, and will always remain, a steadfast partner with Kenya in this journey. Karibuni sana, thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Van. Kindly remain to assist us in awarding certificates to the six PAR facilitators. Uh, at this juncture, yeah, let me invite Dr. Ilana and Skip, together with the six PAR facilitators, to come on stage so that we can receive uh, our certificates from uh, Mr. Matt Van Eden. Karibuni, Salim, Songora, Munira, Olivia, Rehima, and myself. to you and we are going to award the certificates according to teams so we are going to begin with team Nairobi and we're going to begin with Salim Salim next we have Rehema Zaid Rehema So for Team Kasumu, we'd like to recognize Gregory Okumu. And also Olivia Ogata. And now for Team Mombasa, Munira Hamisi. And Nicholas Sangora, last but never least. Never. <laughs> Finally, I'll request uh, to get the, the power facilitators to take a group photo and then we exit the stage. Briefly, yes, kindly. Thank you so much, Ilana and Skip, for that session. At this juncture, I'll request to invite the PAR youth researchers uh, from Kisumu to come and uh, share with us their experience during PAR in the best manner that they are prepared for. Karibu sana, Team Kisumu. Kisoma. 
where our great grandfathers from Alego used to meet with our great grandfathers from Kano. This is the only city with a fresh water lake. And in this fresh water lake, we have Ondeilo, we have Mumi, we have Kabongo, and we have Wiyo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me take you along the rivers of Lake Victoria, where I manage this business of hiring and firing. And today, I'm here for, ready for what? Secretary? Yes, sir. How many times did I call you? Once, sir. Don't repeat again. <laughs> what do you want here? I'm sorry, sir. I, I don't sorry me. What do you want? Uh, there's a visitor. Okay, sir. okay. Yes. Let him order in. And next time, <laughs> look at her. <laughs> Today, I will have to hire and fire. Do you want a new job, PhD? A degree? A well, young man. <laughs> young man, young man. Oh, oh, who, who are you? Good afternoon, Don't call me any boss, name. Listen, uh, you, the afternoon is not good to me. It's very bad. Morning, uh, 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 <laughs> what is your name? Uh, my name is uh, uh, Odilo. Can you, Odilo? Yes. What do you want? How may I help you? Uh, sir, you said that you wanted someone who can drive very well. I, I'm driving. I know how to drive. So what? I can drive driving. Driving. So what? Huh? Should I swallow myself if you know how to drive? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do? To employ me. I, I can't employ wrong people like you. But, Look at you. But I Next time, don't come to my office. Look at the way you are shaggy. Eh? But uh, you know me. Where did you study? Which, which, which university? Harvard University. Harvard University. Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. <laughs> uh, no, 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 shut up. I want to hear something called Rai Lai Mbaku. So can you get out of my office? But sir, go! Yes, in my life, my mother's daughter's I don't nephews. Care. Can you get out of my office? Idiot! Look, look at look at him. Ladies and gentlemen. So you will not employ me. I can't employ such rags. Look at him. My office is Yes, sir. Yes. What's bothering you? And you, you said you are talking to yourself. Let me just talk to myself. It's none of your business. Okay. Can you call the next visitor? Okay, sir, I'm sorry. Sir. Look at her. Sit away, sir. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Ah, angel. Good <laughs> <laughs> morning, sir. Can you turn around? You will not manage my, my morning. Can you turn around? <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, God blesses people. It's very early in the morning. It's a very blessed today. Um, what is your name? Uh, my name is Marty. Okay, so oh, you, you already got the job. So can you, 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 this is Port Pesa. You, this is Port Pesa you are losing, my friend. Eh? Are you giving me the job? Really? Yes, I'm giving you the job, but on a condition. <coughs> Will you be in love with me? Not very good. Where? I know people. I know people. Do you know that I, 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 I drink every day and I, I, with, with honorable people? Eh? All day. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Can you turn next to your neighbor and just uh, say hi? Hi. hi? Why are you saying hi in flight mode? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Stephen Okwan. I'm part of the team. Oh, I should use the mic. I'm loud enough. Yeah, you know, these things, these things came with aeroplanes. <laughs> <laughs> and some of us just see them when, some of us just see them when there's an accident. Unfortunately, we are sorry for the souls we lost. Um, I'm part, I'm, my name is Stephen Okwany. I'm part of the team from Kisumu, who have just showcased that amazing uh, item on stage. If you loved it, can you just give a round of applause? Thank you. So as Kisumu um, participatory action research team, uh, we, uh, through the support uh, from the Generation Change Fellows, we managed to engage 
uh, participatory action research methodologies. And uh, primarily starting with um, design thinking, we looked at the problem statement, and our problem statement was youth unemployment. So basically, if you watch the item, it was much more heavier on youth unemployment, which is a key issue in Kisumu County. So I'll, I'll just be quick to ask, uh, do at any point did this item relate to us? Yes? If you say yes, uh, how did it relate to you, sir? Uh, I would say yes. And uh, how it relates to us is uh, young people are not employed. And uh, for we to get employment, uh, the people in office, they demand something. So as, as a boy child, you cannot be able to be employed because uh, you cannot be able to offer something. But to the girl child, at least they have something <laughs> they can be able to do. It. So that is the unfortunate part of it. Okay, Mwishimi wants to say something. Even before I say something, I just want to know, to say that whatever we have, it's not for that issue. And whatever we have, it had a real purpose, a natural purpose, which God created us to have that. And I want to say, I want to agree that it's about employment. And I want also to agree that it is high time our country, our government has to change some tactics they're using in terms of employment. Because what we are witnessing right now is that we are recycling some old guards. We are taking people who have already retired. We are putting them in boards. We are pointing them in several opportunities while the youth are still there. Wow. Wow. Any other person with any, uh, any comment on the production? Anything you saw? Yes, sir. Um, I also had the mention of Honorable Raila Odinga, and I felt like <laughs> there is um, there is a political inclination inclination to you know offering jobs, and I think just like uh, Honorable has said, like I wish like uh, offering of jobs had nothing to do with a political affiliation or probably ethnic uh, background or something. That would be very helpful for young people. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, basically, if you were the boss in this scenario. What will you have done differently in addressing youth unemployment? If you were, yes. Uh, I think it has to be out of merit and not any other thing. Out of merit? Yes. Okay, and not any other thing. All right. Any other person? Mushimewa, if, of, of course you employ people. How do you do it? I want to be honest, huh? and I'm not saying that it's me, but most of politicians, when you give employment, we just look first our supporters, those who supported us, those who worked with us during the campaigns, and also we also go to our communities and say who is who, and sometimes also you look, if somebody comes, he has the merit, but you say, this one is a jubilee, and I come from ODM fraternity, I cannot employ this one. So that is the truth. But we need to change that. <laughs> that, is, that is great coming from Mweshimi, all right? Yeah. Uh, from where I, I stand, nobody was born a performing artist, right? But uh, of course, there are a lot of theatrics in the political arena. So I want to welcome Mweshimi, just to be the boss, and just show us how would she have done it better in our office. So how many are uh, uh, supporting me to welcome Mweshimi on stage? Please. <laughs> no, do you want me to do it in the way we have been doing it or in the better way now? Now, if you are the boss and uh, you are addressing youth unemployment, how will you do it? So at this juncture, I'll welcome the secretary and um, uh, the gentleman. So, Mwishimiwa, Karibu. So, Mwishimiwa is busy in the office. Please, secretary, usher in. Uh, the applicant. <laughs> Raila is coming today in my constituency. You didn't know that? I thought he was to come yesterday. No, you know I have to go to the airport first. But uh, where is he coming from? What is his name? Can you call him? Uh, 
just come in. Yes, thank you. Uh, on the first place, on the second place, thank you again. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I have certificates here. I know how to drive. I can drive bicycle. First, just tell me your name. What is your name? Oh, my name is Ombuar Sibur Manuar. Hey. Ombuar Sibur Manuar. From where? Which region are you coming from? The uh, county, maybe the county. Uh, you know where there is a big lake and uh, rivers there, there. But you know, no, it's about devolution. Why couldn't you go to Kisumu, maybe? <laughs> Where do you go to Sierra uh, to get that? You, it's about devolution now. Uh, now. Yeah, I went to Kisumu, and uh, you know what they told me? They wanted uh, uh, 45 years experience. And I'm only no, you know Mombasa people have to get their cake. You cannot just be giving employment to people from Nyanza here. Uh, but by the way, by the way, what, what is your party? Your party, which party did you support? You are Sibor, you are Sibor. Yes, oh, we ni mtu ya baba tu. We ni mtu ya baba. Ebu sasa nione hiyo nini yako. Oh, so, oh, you are coming from Kondele. You know, yeah. Yes, Kondele. There was a time you had a rally in Kondele. Were you there? Yes, I was there. I, I, I you were there in Kondele. Yes. The other time when you were doing resist. Yes, power. Yes, power resist. Yes, yes. Oh, that is very, I see. You're educated person, yes. Okay, yeah. Harvard University. Uh huh. Okay, uh huh. Wait, wait, wait. There's a call first now. Uh huh. Oh, she's my missy. I'm just at the airport. Are you coming? Yes. Yes, Baba. Yes, Baba. I'm, I'm just on my way. I'm coming. I was just in the <laughs> office. But I'm, okay. Excuse me. Tomorrow, can you come tomorrow? Because right now I have to rush. I have to pick Baba. I have to pick Baba for a rally. Yes, Baba is coming. Okay, then you can come tomorrow. tomorrow. Thank you. Tomorrow, yeah, yeah. But but I'll just check about it. Okay. okay don't worry. Don't worry. Right. Well, name to your Baba too. Don't worry. Come on, oh. Wow. Wow. Okay. When I grow up, <laughs> I also want to employ people. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen. Um, in uh, participatory action research, we use different methodologies. And of course, what we've showcased now is just one of the techniques known as theater of the oppressed, where the, where the oppressed become the solution. Yes? Um, so in, that, um, in this scenario, we used Madame as an employer to come and create a solution to youth unemployment. Of course, this is just one of the techniques. There are also other techniques. There is an open space. There's learning circle. There's world cafe. But of course, because of limited time now, we won't be in a position to showcase those other methodologies. But one key success I want to uh, acknowledge is that we are already trying to mainstream participatory research, action research as a public participation tool. So Moshimio, you can pick this up uh, in your constituency and just see how to integrate it. Um, uh, at this point, I want to call us to action. The programmers who are here, uh, government officials who are here, our call to action is, can we just give participatory action research a try in our programming? Can we just look at the results? <laughs> yes. So just like I said before, my name is Stephen O'Quine. I've not changed. The time was mine. Thank you. Ero Kamano, that is how we say it at the lakeside. Thank you very much, Tim Kisumu. Uh, allow me to invite um, the Mombasa youth researchers to come also and briefly give us the experience they had with PAR. Mombasa youth researchers, <coughs> the two representatives, kindly. Karibu sana. Let's appreciate them as they come on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Your Excellency Madam Mishi, Boko, our mama from Mombasa, all protocols observed. Good morning. Uh, my name is Joseph Nazareth. I'm a youth researcher uh, from Mombasa, and I'm part of a local community based organization known as Lonamak. Morning, everyone. Morning. I'm Estan Darigo, a project officer from Manyata Youth Entertainment CBO which is a youth-led human rights. And uh, it's located in uh, Mombasa County, so county known as Likoni. Welcome as we take you through our experience in power process. 
I take this opportunity to welcome you all in the Participatory Action Research Lounge. It has been an amazing two years plus for organization Lonamak and Manyatha Youth Entertainment, community-based organization. Uh, first of all, PAR is a research methodology that is being used to facilitate data collection analysis and involves various approaches that include, one, open space, interviews, learning circles, al cafe, and theater of oppressed. Uh, it is through this PAR whereby uh, us, as youth in uh, Mombasa County, we were able to look and identify key problems in our society. And therefore, we were able to come with a problem statement or a research question as the role of the youth in mitigating violent extremism. In the process, the following stakeholders were involved. One, we youths. Two, we had youths in conflict with the law, what we call chafu back in our country, uh, in our county. Three, we had the local community leaders, we had the religious leaders, we had the political leaders, and law enforcers. And all together, members of the community, both from the county and national government representative, summing up to a total of over 300 stakeholders who were consulted in the process. Uh, during this process, we were able to mingle and, uh, with uh, va these various stakeholders, whereby we gain uh, confidence and also, we face our fears, because we know that uh, in our society, we have those chapu, the youth in conflict with the law. Then, they are uh, brothers, but we, fear, but we fear staying close to them, because we feel that they can harm us. So, we are able to face our fears and interview them. We also gain confidence whereby we are able to knock at the doors whereby a youth cannot be allowed to enter for example, in a county commissioner office to interview such a high-profile person. In our MP office, you go, uh, we are able to go and interview and get to know their remarks or their contribution towards the society. The process has been inclusive. That's why today you are seeing our able MP here. She's very supportive. The entire county government is supportive uh, with our, uh, our county director for CVE a fresh appointment from the governor, to look into the matters of CVE, especially around we youth. So I think from here, PAR has given us a stepping stone for where we want to go to. In the resolution 2250, as a, as a UN, we as youth, we need more. More of space, more of everything that we need, more of a listening ear, and more of we lead solutions as youths. Uh, as researchers, we are able to come with a we-lead solution. And in this we-lead solution, some of us have uh, already implemented it. Like we have one of our researchers, like Amina Ali, was able to train and mentor the youth in conflict in the law in and in, in instilling skills on fashion and design. And it is through this also, I managed to get a uh, a job with Manyata Youth Entertainment because I had just started as a volunteer. But uh, as I went through all the process of PAR, I was able to be a project officer in a project which we are in partnership with the CICC, uh, known as a sorry, known as the Shrinking Space Against Violent Extremism. So I thank PAR and all the stakeholders who took us through this process. And also on the action points and uh, milestones that we have are out of par when the go county government employed Madam Munira, so I eventually succeeded Madam Munira as the acting director for Lonama Community Based Organization. So you see par, it is participatory, where youths participate and you move from one ladder, st uh, stepping stone to another. So we pledge to create awareness towards parenting and many more. We call upon all members of the civil society, development partners, donors, and embassy representative to look at innovative possibilities of mainstreaming power in their program designs and implementation of respective county action and implementation plans on CVE. This is a humble appeal to everyone who is here in this room. Kindly give us the space 
We work on the we lead solutions. Involve us when you are doing the county action plans. Involve us when you are doing the implementation plans. Because as much as you are saying that we are the problem, but fortunately, we are the solution. We are the key for you having a better retirement. <laughs> yeah, if, uh, if the country eats its youth, then when you go to retirement, who will nurse you? It is us. So give us the space. In the words of Dina Kawa, the Jordan's representative, what we seek is to draw the world's attention to ensure young people are given the attention they deserve at a time when the world is a theater for increasing number of negative issues. On behalf of Lonamak and Mombasa team and the Maya fraternity, we express our sincere gratitude to be part of this great process. Asante Nisana. Thank you very much, Mombasa team. Youth need to be the one to take their space, the one to participate, the one to engage. Youth are driving positive change. Thank you very much. At this juncture, allow me to invite Miss Judy, representing Nairobi Youth Researchers, to also come and share with us her experience uh, on PAR. Thank you so much. So I think I'm going to start performing my PAR by sitting down. This is what we usually do. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. My name is Judy Wedera Maina. I'm from Nairobi, uh, Kamukunji Pumwani Ward. And uh, talking about PA, I think my, my friends here have said a lot about what they learned. But I can say, we, uh, the Nairobi team, we spoke about good governance. But uh, <laughs> mostly, we would go to your offices, let me say, ma'am, because we also have an MP. And before it was very hard, actually very hard to meet our MP. But after going through PA, it has been easy for us to even have the confidence to go and meet him. Just the confidence for us to go and talk to him about the issues that we have in our community. So uh, before we used to get people from different organizations coming to our area, talking about giving us research papers and giving us interviews. And trust me, youths don't like researches. They don't like uh, to be given papers to sign. So if you want to engage a, a youth, give them something like what we have seen right here, and they will participate very well. So before we would get people coming to our area, and we would question, why are these people coming to talk about our area? And we would go to other places and hear about the researches. But for real, you'll find maybe one or two people will have the thing correct. But after going through PA, we learned that we can do the, the, the researches ourselves and even implement ourselves. So through that, as the youth of Kamukunji, we came up with our own organization, that we are doing our own researches with our own community members. And as through that, I am a, actually a member of Kamukunji Community Peace Network, that is CACPEN, and we engage in peace programs. We do women programs. We even amplify women's uh, voices in PCV in in uh, preventing, countering violence, extremism. I've had my people saying about uh, costs, how it, it's really bad. It's also very bad in, in, in Kamukunji, and we are trying to do that. And uh, going through PA, we, have, we include our own people. People could not talk about uh, extremism in our area. It was really bad, like seriously really bad. You would bring someone from outside and keep them in a room and try to talk about CVE and they would not open up. But now that we are the ones who are doing it ourselves, they are talking about it, they are opening up, we are finding solutions, actually. So I would really thank Rehema and Salim for taking us through the PAR processes. We learned a lot, because right now we also have, we started something called uh, Safe Space for Our Girls, and we find the girls coming to talk about their issues. And one thing that we've taught the girls is the theater of oppressed, what you have seen here. We've taught them to express what they cannot tell. Because you'll find some people, some kids cannot say a lot about what they're going through. So we tell them to act. And through this, we find a lot, we get a lot, a lot of information from them. So, and... Uh, something else is that uh, we have... Uh, 
youth awareness programs that uh, uh, we used to, the, uh, sorry, sorry. I had written all this here, but let me just put it aside then. So we used to have extrajudicial killings and uh, still they're happening. And what we have done, if we've, we've engaged the youths in doing protests that are not violent. So the youths can come out and protest peacefully without having problems with the police. And this is also something that we have done. We've been, we were two of us in, in Kamukunji, in Pumwani area, me and Salim, and we have tried to really bring youths together. We've tried to bring women together. Uh, one of the things that we found out in, in Pumwani actually is that we've been having programs about uh, CVE that are engaging both men and women. So after trying to find out why women do not speak out when we have these programs, we went out and tried to talk to them and find out basically why are they, and they would say that men are usually dominating the programs. So what we came up with is we started coming up with programs that women are the ones who are brought and they talk about the issues of PCV. And trust me, you'll find that women are really going through a lot. They are no longer uh, just the victims. Now they are the perpetrators. They're the ones who are recruiting. Yeah, We have young girls who are also being recruited as young as seven to nine to just name it. And you can tell that uh, when you put youths also alone, you will also get new information that you didn't get. So we've come up through PA, we found out that we can do different programs with different uh, members of the community, but it is their own thing. They feel that they own everything that we do and they appreciate us because we are from the same community. So thank you very much. There's one thing I would like to say by ending this. We've always heard that it is vijana ni viongozi wa kesho. Lakini us, we want to make it vijana ni viongozi sasa. So thank you very much. Karibu sana Nairobi, thank you. Vijana ni viongozi sasa. We are the leaders today, not tomorrow. That's a powerful uh, remark from Miss Judy. Thank you very much. At this juncture, we are almost coming to the close of our event. I would like to humbly invite the PAR facilitators uh, to come and join me on stage. Uh, we are going to have a small panel discussion. And uh, I will also request uh, Dr. Ilana to join us. She will moderate for us the panel. If you look through your program, that's our next. Thank you. I think it's pretty impressive. I think we can all agree. It's quite impressive to see the work that your researchers have been doing um, with your support. And so what we're hoping to do um, with the next about 10 or 15 minutes is to just talk a little bit about your experiences. And then at, at the end, we'd like to open up the um, floor for a question and answers because we want to engage our guests as well. Um, so I want to begin by um, asking about your experience with research before PAR. Um, and maybe you could speak a little bit about how the PAR process differs from traditional research um, paradigms. And then has PAR changed your perspective um, on research? And I'm going to throw that to, to um, Sangora and perhaps Greg. <laughs> Thank you, Ilana. Uh, my name is Nicolas Sungora. Um, I will say that uh, uh, participatory action research 
as uh, brought on board a new energy uh, in a way that uh, uh, there are some components that uh, we never found in the um, conventional way of doing research. Uh, one of the components is In the conventional way of uh, doing research, we have experts, academia, people who have uh, credentials and academic qualifications uh, to conduct research. It's um, uh, more of a structured way, and um, the, the respondents are more of a uh, recipient of information, just giving information out through questions, questionnaires, focus group discussions, you know. But passport action research, this gives an opportunity for also uh, the marginalized, these are youths who have not even gone to school, youths cannot even construct uh, sentences, youths cannot even uh, pass across messages. They're able to be on board uh, and uh, involved uh, from uh, uh, design of uh, the research question and uh, through the process of the actual data collection uh, towards analysis and uh, towards publication of the uh, uh, the, the last uh, uh, publication, which is the report. So uh, this, uh, if you see from the other conventional way of doing research, uh, uh, the participants, uh, most for example, the youth in conflict with the law, these are the targets, they are, uh, they are only involved in uh, uh, giving feedback or response, you know. But patrol action research actually take a lead. Uh, we also have people who are in conflict with the law that actually do what we call uh, interviews. You know, they take a lead and the facilitators, uh, they ask questions to other using in conflict with the law, and this way we are able to get uh, the exact information that we need in, in a way that, you know, it's easy. They say, uh, send a thief to catch a thief. It's easy for me to open up. Uh, if I'm a thief, it's easy for me to open up to my fellow thief and give the actual information that is needed, you know. Uh, but in this other kind of research, if more formal in a way that uh, when you come to me, and perhaps I'm a youth in conflict with the law, is I, I may w want to choose words, you know. Uh, there's that issue of trust. By the time uh, we get that trust, uh, it takes time. You know, so uh, in most cases, uh, I'm not saying that uh, the conventional way of doing research uh, does not bring uh, uh, quality reports into the space. But for action research gives that uh, avenue and leeway to have a proper, effective, and efficient uh, uh, feedback. And uh, um, another component is um, uh, the resources required to do uh, this kind of research is a little bit uh, very minimal on a lower end uh, because uh, it is participatory at the field, at the community level, youth to youth engagement, the same community level, you know. Uh, it doesn't have uh, the professional uh, way of uh, doing feedback, you know. Uh, it's uh, very encouraging. Yeah. In addition to that, uh, my experience with the traditional research, uh, I've taken part as an enumerator. And uh, most of the time, we, we take part in, in issuing questionnaires and formal interviews with the people we are working with on the ground. And I think it has been so blocked and doesn't give space for more thoughts and it's less inclusive. So with participatory action research, uh, it has brought or it has made research more exciting for us because of the methodologies that have been put in place and that we have. Again, the participatory nature of it uh, has, according to me, I, I think has allowed for more creation of knowledge, or new knowledge, uh, as opposed to the traditional way where we are proving a hep uh, an hypothesis that someone or an entity wants us to prove. So this one gives us more space to think out, to, to create more information, and it's more of a bottom-up approach. So we're not allowing a person or an entity to drive the agenda, to give us the information, to, uh, to give us what to speak about or what to think about, but we are giving the grassroots a chance to come together and, inf uh, and, and build up knowledge that will ultimately influence positive change in the community. Thank you. Um. The other one. 
So uh, my next question for you, I, all, our guests have the publications um, in hand, um, and I'm sure when they go home and when they have a moment, they will take time to really dig in deep. It's, it's quite rich research, um, but for the moment, I'm hoping that uh, you could speak a little bit about, maybe tell everyone here, um, what one research finding would you like our guests to know and why is that research finding so, so significant? So I'm going to ask Olivia from Team Kisumu. I'm going to ask, I believe, Salim from Team Mombasa, Nairobi. Team Nairobi, I'm sorry, and Munira from Team Mombasa to, to respond. Thank you. My name is Olivia Ogada. Uh, according to the Kisumu findings, there were several and all of them were pressing. <laughs> so um, what I would like to highlight so far, um, in terms of the complex bureau bureaucratic processes, uh, the youth were having quite a tough time trying to navigate through these processes. Because when they went to the offices to look for the youth funds and everything to be self-employed, because nowadays we are being um, told uh, to try as much as possible to be self-employed because there's no job opportunities. And uh, when they try to go to those offices to access loans or to access funds, they're being told to fill forms, uh, register their business, which is usually very hectic, and then to give security. And you remember a young person who has just come from university does not even own a land to put it as security. So that is one thing that has actually been bothering the young people. So in terms of their self-employment, it has actually given them stress when they're going through these processes. Thank you. Um, one of the key things as Nairobi team that came out is corruption. And I know corruption is in everybody's lips, especially Kenyans. But we are more talking about corruption at the higher level. And one of the things that as we are doing the research that came out from the community and the stakeholders is that corruption does not start from the president. Corruption starts from the community, from the households. And we must be able to understand how do we engage people? Because that was very, very fundamental in terms of how do we continue engaging communities? Because we cannot be able to solve corruption which is an issue which we actually need to declare it as a national disaster in Kenya. We cannot be able to solve it by removing the current regime, by removing the politicians. We must be able to solve corruption by engaging communities, by engaging different stakeholders in the communities. Because when people talked about corruption in the community, they talked about civil society. They said they are corrupt. Because when we take trainings in Madare, we want to pay people. So again, it is not impactful for these people because what you pay for, what you, when you pay for something, you'll strive to work for it. But when you paid to earn something, you'll not take it as a serious thing. And so they felt as communities, especially young people, women, and different business people in Madare, uh, Majengo, Waraka, and Mukuru, they felt we need to be able to solve corruption from the grassroots level. And the solutions are there. We need a participatory approach to this issue called corruption. Thank you. Uh, well, for Mombasa team, we had various findings, but the, the highlighting ones were, um, in Mombasa, we have many uh, organizations uh, currently carrying out many interventions on VE, but unfortunately, they do not target the real um, vulnerable youth. Mm. So one thing that came out of the research was, in as much as we have actors, and when I say actors, I mean uh, civil society, county governments, national governments, we need to change approach. And how do we change approach? Like what Greg said, we need to start from the grassroots level. What does the youth in Kisauni want that the youth in Likoni uh, 
wants. We cannot customize a one shoe to fit everyone in Mombasa County. So we need to find out, and how do we find out best? Through participatory action research. The other um, uh, finding was parenting. If you look at the Mombasa County Action Plan for PCVE, uh, the main uh, focal area is around the family unit. And to be honest, everything starts within the family. And unfortunately, one of the greatest challenges has been we have so many broken families. Our boys do not have role models. Our boys do not have fathers to look up to in terms of mentorship. Our mothers are struggling to make ends meet. And it is the same mothers, like what Judy was saying, are now being used as perpetrators, not even victims anymore. So the fact that these um, findings came out strongly, it now begs the question, why do we have everyone doing the same thing yet we still have the problem within the community? That now tells us that there's something that we've been doing, you doing the same thing on and on and expecting different results. But if partners and if um, the developing partners in this room could look at how best could we now mainstream participatory action research and how best do we now design programs together with the community we would be moving in a correct way. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for those thoughtful responses and sharing your work. Um, Rehema, we have not heard from you. So my question, which I will direct to you, is what value has PAR added to your work? Actually, for me, first of all, I would like to thank the U.S. Embassy and USAP for mentorship. Initially, we were only working within the Nairobi informal settlements, but with the introduction of participatory action research, we were able to give power back to the people. Power enabled us to create ownership, to design programs that are, can create sustainability in the community. You cannot give someone maize flour when, the, when that person needs maybe a pair of shoe. So it's very important to engage the community right from designing of the program. SOPA has enabled me, because of participatory action research, I've been able to give power back to more than 500 and plus youth in Nairobi County. And I've been able to move out to other regions. Now I'm, I'm in Nakuru, I'm in Mombasa and other regions. And if were it not for participatory, risk, risk, participatory action research and enabling me to like climb the ladder or to give power back, as Judy was saying, they were able to do many things because of our mentorship. And for us being able to know that now we've mentored them enough and we are ready to let go. And second, power has enabled me to move to another level in terms of thinking on how we can tie grassroots issues, emerging issues. You know, sometimes these things can be choking. You hear a lot, and with CV work, it's very depressing. So it has enabled me to feel that we can tie these issues to policy. That's why I'm calling upon each one of you here to support us as we are thinking, we are trying to partner with Nairobi County to come up with a youth policy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rehema. Um, you have policy makers. Um, and development partners in the room. So um, I wonder if you might want to take an opportunity now, take the opportunity um, to tell them what you would like to see, the, what would you like them to do? And uh, I will direct that to anyone who feels. What I would urge you please, trust us. I remember I went to the Nairobi County and uh, had some, um, a meeting with some officials and asked them why I don't see the county as active as Mombasa. And someone said, you young lady, you're so young. <laughs> and I told them, please don't look at my body, look at what I have to offer. So please trust us, there's so much that we can give. And the reason why I think I'm able to deliver on the Nairobi County Youth Policy to take lead is because I know I'll not do it alone. I know it will be participatory. We'll have women international security and, and other stakeholders who will join us and it will become it will not become something for one person. So believe us, we are here to work with everyone and not one person. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Um, I think uh, I have a comment on that. 
is uh, our country Kenya is one of the countries that have uh, amazing policies yeah but uh, we fail to implement and one of the reasons is because uh, public participation is not meaningful and effective I feel that uh, the use that uh, uh, the Kenyan population 70% uh, makes the youth and when decisions are made in this country if the youth are not involved uh, are meaningful and purpose purposeful it becomes a problem and that's why doing implementation uh, the projects brought by the policies and implementation process that not uh, touch to the heart of the common Mwananchi. So I, I feel uh, having passport action research, it will be very important for the policy makers. You have the AMP here, we have government officials here. It's important to uh, incorporate and mainstream passport action research uh, uh, in the public participation processes. This way even uh, the youth that do not even know to read how to write, they could participate and give their input. And these are not stopped there. Also in terms of uh, there's what we call validation process. It's very important if they could use participant action research. Um, the policies will be very effective, you know, and, and the feedback will also uh, bring the issue of uh, uh, effective and efficient uh, project uh, implementation, uh, development, and also the issue of monitoring and evaluation in the long run. So participant action research, uh, we really recommend this process. And you have seen from uh, this publication, this is a, a living testimony. You know, uh, it is youth driven and the result is amazing. And we have result, uh, amazing results here from young people that have lives are changed and they're transformed. They have that courage and energy. They say that this is our document. So uh, look at that situation now. Going back to implement the recommendation becomes very easy because youth already are conversant with this document. They know we participate in this process and this is what we need to do. Like youth having the will lead, will lead solution, that taking a pledge, you know, if this policy comes, I will help to do A, B, C, D. And this is my role and my responsibility because I participated effectively and meaningfully. Thank you. Uh, when you go through the document, there are two solutions. There is the youth lead solution, where the youth are committing, especially the youth researchers are committing to do some things in their communities. And then we have the recommendations. and. I just want to seek the support and the collaboration of every stakeholder who's in here. Government, non-government, development practitioners, young people who are here, uh, business people who are here, to find a way in which we can be able to work together to see cross-cutting issues from Mombasa, Kisumu, and Nairobi. How can we take this issue, petition parliament, petition all these institutions, and improve some of the policies because we might say and we'll sit here and talk about youth have done this youth have done this but if we cannot have influence on any of the policies then we'll be doing nothing and so one of the recommendations in here is how do you influence policies and how do you actually collaborate with the county government national government and different stakeholders so i'll want us to look at the recommendations from the um from the three counties, and how can we be able to actually work, let's say, with BRICS, work with the uh, Likon, um, Mombasa County, work with Nairobi County, and sit down and say, this is one thing. I just want us to look at one thing. We cannot solve all these things that we have written in here. Just one thing, that we can all sit down, multisectoral meeting, and say, this is what we want to push for. Have meetings with policymakers, have meetings with Senate committees have meetings with parliamentary committees on one issues. And at the end of the day, we shall say, out of this report, we have been able to solve one problem in Kenya. That's the only plea I have. Thank you. Uh, briefly, I want to say that youth can create knowledge. And this report that today we are launching is a living proof of that. And so therefore, we are requesting and humbly uh, inviting all the stakeholders to engage us. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Rahima? And another very important thing as a practitioner on the ground, I noted that most of the programs that we design and we send to communities are like imposed. That's why when I leave, I live with my program and my, fin my funding and everything in the community is forgotten. Let's do this with a lot of passion. These are our children. These are our communities. You know, today it is his son. Tomorrow it might be my son. You never know who, who might become a victim. No one is immune to this. So I urge each one of you, let's do it with a lot of passion. 
let's design programs that are really needed by the community. Let's not just impose it just because I need funding. You know, for me, if you give me funding and I know that this is not needed in the community, I will not take it <coughs> because I know I'll be wasting my time. So let's design programs that are needed by the community. And we will only be able to do this if we engage them through participatory action research. Let's hear their voices. Let's, let's know through the various stakeholders what problems they have so that by the time Rehema leaves Majengo or Kibra, they don't say it's her baby, it is our baby. Let's take care of this baby. Thank you so much. Okay, so Munira will have the final comment and then we would like to open it up to the floor for a little bit of question and answer. Mine's very short and brief. Um, I think uh, there needs to be a shift in how we do things moving forward. Um, if uh, you're a development partner seated in this room, if you're a donor, if you're um, you know, a grant giving organization, do not overlook the informal networks we have at the grassroots level because that's where the magic happens, to be honest. That's where the young uh, youth who actually go out of their way to carry out peace building work voluntarily without expecting a single cent. And they do it in sustainable ways. So kindly, if you're calling out for proposal or if you're you know, giving out grants, do not forget to interact and engage the informal or formal youth networks within the grassroots levels. Thank you. Thank you. Is that okay? Okay, great. Questions? Please. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Mokeira Masita. I'm the CEO of Research Plus. Um, I'm really happy to be here. Um, I know Rehema. Um, we do research in various areas, including CVE, and uh, I actually interviewed Rehema on one research as a key informant uh, on CVE issues. Um, we also really appreciate new approaches to research as much as we also still do the traditional approach. And action research is actually one that we have been trying to champion a lot. Uh, my co-director is actually 100% focused on action research and fortunately she could not be here today. Um, so we are really excited about you know, hearing this with uh, participatory action research and what you're doing. Um, one of our values as an organization is actually novel approaches. So we're always championing uh, new approaches and challenging people to think differently and do things differently. Um, one thing that I would like, I'm curious about, and that I would like you to highlight to people, when we do traditional research, there's something called sampling. Uh, and often you'll hear people complain, especially with opinion polls, if they're not happy about, um, uh, you know, Ryla is not leading. <laughs> uh, they'll say, who did you sample? Who did you speak to? You know, um, and I guess you will actually also experience the same thing. Uh, you will have youth saying that, which youth in Dakuru did they talk to? Um, which youth in Mombasa did they talk to? So how do you deal with such issues? If I'm a young person seated in uh, Nakuru, how do you reach me so that then I participate? How do I get sampled? So if you can highlight that for us. Um, do I answer that? And then if you can answer that and then... Okay, do we want to take a few more questions? Okay. Yeah, thank you. And I want to appreciate all of you. My question is, how do you link the power with social media forum, especially those of the youth? I'm saying that because, and I think Songoro is here, he comes from my constituency. We have several youth forum, the social media. And sometimes I just look and see the way they converse, what they are talking. And I just say, this is terrible. Because you can just see some youth insulting other leaders, talking nonsense, and so many other things. And yet you say that you want to prove that you are able to be given different opportunities and you have the capacity. But I think you need also to use this kind of research to ensure that you can even moderate the conversation which the youth are using through the media. Because it is also through social media that there are some recruits which have been done. The issue of radicalization is also being done through the social media. Sometimes you can see just a sentiment. A youth has just posted a sentiment and you're saying, what is this? 
and you're just looking maybe to see somebody from the same forum, maybe moderating or maybe just giving some guidance on that conversation, but none. And you see, if somebody just sat inside, inside, and inside, you know. And even from that, when they go home, they can even use the same, same things to do other havoc. And the other issue, it's about employment. You have been crying, crying, crying each and every time that you don't have employment as youth of this country. But my question is, many times you're seeing sometimes the presidency or maybe members of parliament, the cabinet secretaries, making some appointments. And mostly, you see very few youth. For instance, in a board of 10, you just get only one youth. In a board of 15, you just get only one youth. And yet, you're over 70%. But I don't see you being aggressive or rather assertive in just telling the government or the relevant authorities that whatever you are doing is not right. And most of the times, you do so many programs when you have some fundings. But my question is, if the funding is not there, how do you sustain all these good things you're talking about? How do you become sister skipper, brother skipper for the society or for the community without even the funding? Because I've been an activist sometimes back before I became a member of parliament. And they know when you have the funding, we do so many programs, you know, what, what, what. But then after the funding, you don't hear anything. And you're asking, so this program just ended like that? That tempo or that momentum just dies like that. So I think it is high time, whatever we're doing, like the PAR, I really appreciate because that is how you can give the youth ownership of that. But we really need to sustain it. We really need to know how we are going to manage even the negativity and the challenges encountered, irrespective of not having funding. Thank you. One more question, and then we will hand it over to you to respond. My name is Amundia from Nairobi County Youth Network and uh, from the Nairobi County Government. So one is to appreciate uh, what uh, good job you've done in terms of uh, doing research and uh, bringing in a new model uh, which can be able to bring in development. So one, uh, I'm seeing you not a big team in terms of uh, uh, trained, uh, given knowledge in terms of uh, par. So my question and follow-up question is, how, which is your plan in terms of going out and creating more awareness to the model that already you've gone through it? Because if you want it to be uh, participatory to everybody, everybody needs to own it and everybody needs to have knowledge about it. Then two, how are you planning to use PAR to influence uh, uh, national and county budgets, especially the CIDP and ADP? Because already we know if something uh, in the county is not budgeted for, even if we do activism to how level, it cannot be able to be captured and Im uh, implemented. So on those two questions. A lot of excellent questions with yeah. very limited amount of time to respond. So, so um, I'm, I'm just going to make you aware of the time, mm. maybe about five minutes, yeah. and then we want to move into to close. Yeah. So I will let you self-manage, answer what? Yeah, I'll, I'll answer the first question. Um, while we appreciate traditional way of um, research, it's because most of the findings and everything has been driven by that. But unlike traditional research, PA is quite different. We, it's community-based. When you look at the publication or the report, we have looked at different stakeholders. Yes, we are talking about governance, especially from Nairobi. We are talking about governance. But we engage business people in all these communities. We engage local administration, that is the police, the DO, and the county government. We engage religious leaders, that is both Christians and um, Muslim. We engage every stakeholders in that community. And also, when you look at the process of power, the power process, it's not just finding the research and giving to the people, but it's the ownership. The people are saying, yes, we have come up with this problem in this community. How do we solve it? And like this other um, research where it's just for the public consumption, no, this power 
is solutions for the communities. These are solutions that we have, this is the problem we have found in our community. Like we talked about governance, we talked about security, we talked about corruption. And how do we solve security issues in our communities? How do we solve say, um, corruption issues in our, in our communities? So it's community led and it's a community process that is long term. And that's why we are looking at change at personal level, how is the change in us, the change at the community level, or the youth who are part of this pr uh, process, what is the change? And also, also, what is the change in everyone involved? Yeah. Madam Wishimi will answer the question on sustainability, and some of the youth whom we've worked he with here in the room can attest to that. For us, we only get, our grants are very small as ESEP, and at the moment, our only donor is the U.S. Embassy. Sometimes we get friends like Women International Security and other organizations who invite us, but our grant is very small. But I will tell you, after the grant, we make sure that we come up with programs that we are able to continue even after the donor is gone. We organize ourselves. Like, I, I, I can proudly say our grant doesn't exceed 300,000, let's say, per, per area. But even with that small grant, maybe 700,000 in like the whole of Nairobi, some of the most of the slums in Nairobi count. But we've given birth to CAPCAM. We've given birth to the 500 plus peace ambassadors. And we continue to work together even without the funding. Sometimes we get other organizations, they invite us because they know our work, the work that we've done. And our work runs all through. And sometimes people think that I get like 10 million. <laughs> and they ask me why I don't drive, but I'm telling you, we most of the time, and with all these networks, we volunteer. So the spirit of volunteerism with us is so high because we are pained, because we are seeing our brothers being killed through extrajudicial killings. We are seeing widows in the community. You know, all these, these things are really paining us. That's why we don't care sometimes whether there is money or no money. We just come out very strongly as Nairobi Network Peace Ambassadors. We work. And thank you so much, madam, and let's continue working. But if you have grants, don't overlook us. You give to, <laughs> you give to big organizations and people who are so passionate. My sister Fauzia can attest to these people who are working so hard. They are neglected. They are called small, but they are very impactful. You can cross-check this with the embassies. Our program was rated among the top in the last, impl in the last impl implementation phase. So we are doing a lot. But because we are still small and young, that's why I asked you when I was talking to you, I said, please trust us. <laughs> oh, that's all we are asking. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> OK, I'll answer in terms of the, uh, uh, the plans of creating awareness. OK, during the PAR process, we had like 12 engagements. And it was very interactive with the community. So at the last engagement, we had the sharing event. In the sharing event, that's when the uh, researchers, the youth researchers, did different presentations to showcase the entire processes uh, and the stages that they went through, through the, the methodologies and everything. So that was a very great, uh, a good opportunity for us to, sh uh, to create awareness to the stakeholders that were there. I remember there were people from the county government, and they say they are going to adopt it, and they are going to use the our great theater groups uh, to come and help them do their participatory uh, processes in the county government. So that was actually a very good uh, platform for us in terms of creating awareness. And as they were moving uh, through different stakeholders, it was interesting for them because they were um, engaged in, s in several techniques. Uh, and they were very excited. And some even say they're going to adopt, the, to adopt the methodologies in their organizations. Thank you. I'll talk about the aspect of how do you influence policy using participatory action research. So I'll give you a key example of what we've done in Mombasa County. So Mombasa County government, I think, is the first government that has been able to inculcate uh, uh, the county action plan for PCV into the CIDP. And all this uh, was through a very consultative process through various sectors from the county departments to the civil society led by Haki Africa, uh, the county commissioner's office. So when you have 
a process that is very consultative and participatory, then it, it makes your work even much easier. And through that, we've been able to do the first uh, PCVE county policy framework that is still uh, in draft. And inside it, we have um, an aspect of how do we sustain PCVE uh, interventions within Mombasa County. So for example, when a donor comes in and they have their program and um, the program ends, we are assuming uh, the resources end, we have the CVE fund that is now uh, as a booster to, to make programs more sustainable. So that has been one of the achievements that we've been able to do so far using PAR. And the subject of online campaigns on the negative messaging online, the last program that we implemented was uh, we were trying to come up with positive narratives. So we know there's so much negativity, there's so much negative things that are being said. So ours is to come up with positive statements, positive reinforcements, giving hope to the people and giving, back, uh, giving peop power back to the people. So it's very important, the alternative narrative, the positive narratives. I know sometimes you can be called a traitor but we are not really traitors because we know we are doing something that is righteous even before the eyes of God. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I'd like to comment on uh, uh, four questions. Uh, <laughs> can you take v one? Very short. Sangora. Very short, very important. And one uh, is from the area MP, my able MP, on uh, uh, what can be done on the social media, especially the WhatsApp. I agree with, uh, with her that uh, that's a new trend. Uh, the kind of conversation young people put across is uh, very traumatizing. And uh, uh, one of the uh, ways you have tried to apply it is to use the authority. Uh, like what happened in Likondo, OCPD had to summon the uh, administrators, you know, the WhatsApp administrators, because they're kind of moderators in what should be happening in the WhatsApp groups. So this way, if uh, uh, we are able to train the WhatsApp administrators, for them to bring out clear objectives of the WhatsApp, whether they should remove someone if they bring negative energy in the WhatsApp group, or they should advise. You know, that is very positive. And then, um, in line with this, again, um, as an organization, uh, we have started um, an online TV known as Anika Community Media, Action Network for Inclusion, Knowledge, and Accountability, that is trying to complement the work done by mainstream media. As you know, um, in many parts of the country, especially in the coastal area, there are parts there where mainstream media cannot penetrate to. And uh, the negative narratives come from the mainstream media. You know, at attack in Mombasa becomes very vibrant. So when you compare the positive stories that young people are doing, uh, Mashinani did not come to the mainstream media. So this is a way of uh, uh, trying to uh, bring positive messages, like what now, what comes from the attack at Dusit the other day, uh, talking about uh, the young people came from Mombasa who did the attack, you know, and there was uh, issues like Mombasa is not safe, we need to go to Mombasa, and this is very negative, you know. So uh, we need to have a positive energy from the young people, uh, and uh, this way we're able to actually uh, play safe because negative energy is very is very bad. And on the issue, there's a question from my brother which is very important. He asked uh, the issue of future plans. Uh, we, uh, as uh, we are only six trained experts now from the certificate, uh, what happens? How do we move around? What are our plan? One issue I'll say very clear and said very clear here and honestly is we are available. Is that true or no? For us, we are very available uh, to trickle down this information. Uh, possibly partner uh, with most of you to put up other trainings so that we can reach out to other uh, uh, youths, train them to also become experts in these processes. The point is, if you have many par practitioners from the community, we solve the issues. And lastly, Ilana, please. Um, <laughs> I'm talking about the issue of sustainability. You know, we get it wrong. Uh, if you want to have a project become sustainable, then we need to start involving a meaningful participation from the design of the project. That is where most people get it wrong. You just come on a relief of approach, you just sit in your room, do a very good proposal, thinking that a school will help this community, you know? Uh, thinking uh, that, you know, if you, you talk about drug abuse in this community, maybe that's not even the problem in that community. You know, it's the cost of living is a problem. So, you know, if you involve the community using participatory action research, for you to understand what are the key issues in that community, and then go back, develop a project, you'll have the issue of effective and efficiency. The community will own the process, and uh, in the long run, they'll be able to sustain uh, the projects. And one very important way is use 
of participatory action research <laughs> and the use of participatory educative theatre. You don't need uh, much resources. Thank you Great. so much. Thank you so much. As you can see, our, our, our PAR Peace Builders are passionate. Um, and incredibly talented and bright. Um, and um, we want to continue this conversation during the reception. Um, we, need, we want to bring the program to a close. And so I'm going to invite um, Gregory, MC, yes, to come. Exactly, we cannot forget. We will not forget. Gregory is going to invite her up. So I'm going to invite our, our um, PAR Peace Builders to, to return. And Gregory is going to take over um, MCing from now. Thank you so much. Can we give them a round of applause? They've been working very hard, <laughs> incredibly hard. Thank you. Thank you very much for that energetic session. I wouldn't want to uh, lock you out. Probably I'll allow you just to ask the question and then we can answer it while we'll be having the networking session. Is that okay with you? Thank you. Sorry, uh, the question was taken from my mouth. Um, it's now just about in the spirit of power to make a disclosure. My, my name is Jojo Sasso. I work with the Ministry of Public Service, Youth and Gender Affairs, State Department for Youth, which basically sets this. Now, PAR and the facilitators, the challenge is we are currently reviewing the national youth policy. You have struck me as very resourceful. I challenge you to have those views on board so that the policy that comes out uh, reflect the views that you have picked from the society. That is the revelation that I wanted to make. But for the rest of it, there was a question about bureaucracy and uh, difficulty to, uh, reach, to reach us. Now I'm here, please could we meet when we are taking tea? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Th thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just the last uh, guest to my name is uh, Reverend Anyanda, and from listening, I think there is need for linkages, intergenerational linkages. You can get a lot of things if you don't link it to the older people. They're not dying tomorrow. <laughs> Let's get um, a do no harm way of linking our findings to some of them. Thank you very much. Uh, I know there's a lot, there are more thoughts that uh, we are developing. And uh, at this juncture, uh, allow me to invite the Honorable Mishimboko to come uh, and join me on stage. Uh, as uh, we'll request her to give her final thoughts on this. Yes, let's appreciate Mweshimiwa. I don't think whether there's anything more I should add because the panelists have talked it all. And I really want to say Kongole Sana for those coming from the coast. And I want to say for those coming from Kisumu, Erokamana. <laughs> and those coming from Nairobi, Kazipo. <laughs> yeah, from the onset, I really want to appreciate our partners. That is the American Embassy, the United States Institute of Peace, the county government of Mombasa, and I also want to pass an apology on behalf of my governor, Governor 001. We were with him yesterday. In fact, he told me that he's coming today. But unfortunately, you know, because of the flight, he couldn't make it. But thanks to my sister here, she's representing the county 001. I also want to say, Ongera Sana, to our great youth who are here, and the good job you are doing for this country. I've just noted quite a number of things which maybe we might take <coughs> and maybe build something on that. There is this big issue about the extrajudicial killings. Because I know America is part of Kenya, and America is part of UN, and Kenya is also part of UN. And sometimes you have those big conferences where you sit and you make decisions. So I'm talking about this issue so that at least you can take the information to higher levels of conversation. Extrajudicial killings in coast region and in Kenya at large is rampant. And any time a youth is killed, there is no proper justification. There is no proper investigation. What we get is just cosmetic investigation and no feedback. And that is why the youth rebel. They become bitter. 
and they say that we want to revenge. I have witnessed that. Songoro is here. He comes from my constituency, Likoni. And those things have been happening many, many times. So many sheikhs have been killed. So many sheikhs have been disappeared. But just for a few days, you just hear, okay, the DCI will give some report. Oh, Sijui, the OCPD will give some report. But after just a week, everything dies. So people come back to the community and they ask question. And they want to know why. The question why. And nobody tells you why. Nobody gives you an answer. And that is why you see the youth become very vulnerable to be recruited and to be taken to the issue of radicalization. So that thing, you need to talk about it in the other conferences, which this youth, maybe they will not get opportunity to raise all these concerns. But you need to talk about it. Police brutality, it is rampant. Because in the process of netting, the youth which you call chafu, and for me, I just want to say that we need to change this narrative and the branding of the youth as chafu. Just the other time, we had the Red Cross donating some fishing boat to our youth in Likoni. They're saying, you know, we are donating this to our reforms, chafu. And I said, no, excuse me. Let us just say to our wasafi. Instead of using the chafu, let us say wasafi. Because the moment you tell them that they are chafu, you are humiliating them. It's like you are segregating them, you are isolating them. You, you belong to this group, which you call them chafu, and you, you belong to this group, which you call safi. So even if maybe they are in those groups which you call them chafu, but please let us brand them as wasafi. That is another good way to ensure that you, you belong. <laughs> and the other time, I was also, I will be referring to Songoro because it comes from my constituency. The other time we were saying, you know, the donors have been giving us some funding for capacity building, for trainings, and other issues. But sometimes you just see the same, same faces taking for this training. The same, same faces giving that capacity building. Why can't you take those groups you are calling them chafu and say now, this group, we have already empowered them. This group, at least, they are aware of what is happening. Let us now take the chafu. Take them to Serena Hotels. Take them to Mombasa Beach Hotel. Take them to Intercontinental Hotel. They can stay for the three days. They, they will also feel just being there, you know, and sleeping in a five-star hotel. And, you know, having dinner with an American ambassador. Maybe he's there. You say, yeah, yo, that is the American ambassador. Okay, excuse me. So, eh? <laughs> I'm being recognized. But we are doing the same, same things, using the same, same way. And that is why I want to say I really appreciate Pa. Because this one is totally different. Even in terms of sampling, in terms of data collection, in terms of data analyzi analyzing, it is totally different from the way we used to do things. So I really want to encourage you that this is the way. And I want to request the donors. We still need funding and more funding for all these groups which participated. We have done how many counties? Three, you have done three counties. So we have 47 counties. And maybe if you're not going to do all, but you can just do some sampling. At least maybe you do like 20, 20 counties, yeah? I want to agree with you, my brother here. You do like 20 counties. If you do that, at least, tutakuwa tumefika mahali. And for us, as leaders, we will partner with you. Myself and Sungoro, we mobilize several youth group in Likoni, and we form an organization called Likoni Youth Synergy. And they use theater to disseminate information, to do peace building, the issue of unity among the youth. And I want to say, Hongera to my governor, because the other time I called him, he never came, but he contributed a million shillings for the youth to buy some equipment for the theater processes. So I just want to encourage that the donors can maybe just think of, maybe just apart from the trainings and what, maybe they can chip in and do some other things, like maybe buying some equipment for the theater things, the music and what, and also some small generating activities which can generate some income. 
Kama siyo jamani. The people from the lake. If you are given some boats, fishing boats, you can give to your youth. So that they go to Migingo Island there. And they can do some fishing. The coastal people again. And the people of Nairobi here. There are also some, so many projects which you can do. Maybe even agriculture, isn't it? So when you do it, it's just near Central, Nawapi, where youth can do some farming. So I just want to say that these things, they're workable. We can sustain them. But we need to involve all the relevant stakeholders. That chief at the grassroots level is very important. That mze wa mta is very important. That mama wa mboga, kina mama wa vikundi, the women organization, it is very important. Like us, through the kekewopa in the parliament, we have created the embrace. Simona, Yuzi, we have created the embrace. We want to give support to His Excellency the President and Right Honorable Raila Molo Odinga on the issue of the handshake. Building Bridges Initiative. Isn't it? And you know, when these things are starting and they're happening, don't just say this belongs to the political class. You also need to take the lead and say that enough is enough. Kenya should be one nation, one country, and one people. And it is the youth to do that. It's not the politician. You know, the politician, normally they are biased and they are selfish. In most of the cases, I'm not saying that I'm selfish, I'm not. <laughs> but I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying most of them, they're selfish. But as for you, at least you can manage. The issue of employment, and I'm not inciting you. The day, the youth of this country will say, enough is enough in terms of employment. The day your voices are going to be bold, audible, and consistent of saying that this is what we want, and this is what we want. That is the day the governors will know sasa, kuleta wazia ambuwa meritaya, ako 70 years, ata kutembea natumia mkongojo, then is given an opportunity, haitafanyika. But you guys, something like a crisis, now like drug is a crisis. Eh? And you see you are doing some demonstration, just a handful of people. Just a handful. How many board you have passed there in that parliament? How many? Where are the youth? How many youth? The cabinet secretaries, how many youth? Even sometimes they nominated, how many youth? When they take women, they don't take in a rehema, that age of rehema. They take myself of 40, 45 years, nominated MCA. So it is you. The only time Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta atasikia hawa vijana sasa wamesema enough is enough ni nyinyi. All the counties saying no we have seen in that parliament today you have passed nine members to be in the irrigation board. We have only seen one youth. We are not going to agree on that. All the medias are talking the same same issue. All the radio are talking the same issue and everywhere. And, every, and that consistency, you know, for you, you just do it once. You bring what? But for your own issues which are really touching you, you don't do that. You don't. So you also need to know. You can use. Sometimes you need to go a bit radical. You know, the other time, women were saying that you men, if you're not voting, you're not taking the vote. Today, if you come, you will not get what you used to get every day. <laughs> you need to be radical sometimes, you know? Don't just be, j don't just be a good person all the times, you know? <laughs> Provided you don't violate the law. Provided you don't violate the law. But be radical sometimes for you at least to achieve whichever you want to have. Otherwise, sisi waishimiwa Hatuta sikia hizo maneno za kidogo kidogo ati watu watatu wanasema sijui nini, sijui nini kesho kutwa, they are not there. Or sometimes you take some cases to the court and we know some activists have just been used. Enda upeleke hiyo kwa kesi. He takes that and we say flani flani, amepeleka kotini. Yes, it's going to be hard. Justice Maraga is going to. And all of a sudden you hear that, ame withdraw. So what is that? And that is a very non-activist, ame anajulikana. 
So hata hiyo njia hata sisi tunasema hii ni leo tu hata demonstrate leo kesho itaisha tu na mambo itae mambo itaendelea. So there's so many things maybe I could have said but I really want to appreciate you and I also want to applaud Manyata because it comes from my constituency they have done a lot they have partnered with me they have involved me so we are working together with them. The Mombasa team I've seen all what you have been doing. And I also want to say, Kongole to my governor. I think it is the entire country. Eh? It's only Mombasa County, which has taken. Na hata county, hata county, hata governor, na nebe. Na huyu Songoro, anatu chapa, chapa sana. Songoro will be there questioning about the budgeting. You, Songoro will be there questioning about what is happening on, in terms of water, in terms of the youth money, in terms of sport, in terms of the revolving funds. Guys, this is Kenya. Your percentage is over 70%. Without you, there is no Kenya. Sini kwa liyo? Kwa hivyo, kazi ipo, kazi kweno. Asante sana mweshima. Kwa hayo maingi ama machache, may I say God bless you. Asante sana mweshima. Baki kidogo. Thank you very much, the Honorable Mishimboko. Allow me to present to you a token of appreciation from our colleagues from USIP and also from the power facilitators uh, who have been part of this process. With me is a coin, uh, uh, which is a, a, a gift from the USIP. And also a pen that we hope each and every time you use to write, you'll be remembering this process and also your commitment, <laughs> your commitment to our work. I also have uh, another set of uh, appreciation that we want to request you to kindly deliver to His Excellency uh, Joho, the Governor 001, Sultan himself. Yes. And uh, <laughs> tell the Sultan that we are grateful for this commitment and we are looking forward to working more with the gov county government. Let's appreciate Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, our program has come to a close, and I want to really take this opportunity to appreciate all of us, especially our honored guests who spared time to come and be part of uh, our launch event, and especially to listen to us to give us the attention that we needed today. And I want to request that we have so many copies of this publication, we're inviting you all again to take uh, a few copies for your organizations, for your friends, for the, the, your partners, so that we can all together extend and amplify this work that we are doing. 